What's on your iPhone? Can you show me what's on your iPhone? Can you do a video about what's on your iPhone. If I've gotten one request more than any other, that's it. So here's what's on my iPhone. My wallpaper is by Mark Edwards of Bajango fame. I'll put a link to that in the description. And right up front, I'll warn you, everything on my home screen is default. It's the only way I can make sure that when I switch phones or reset phones or reinstall phones that everything is where I expect it to be. Right up top, I have Apple's default mail app because I don't need to use mail as a to-do list or a productivity tool. I don't need to get things done in mail and I don't need inbox zero. All I need is notifications for the most important emails and the ability to search for anything at any time. For the important emails, I have VIP. VIP is so great, I want Apple to tear it out of mail and make it a contact level service. I want to have VIP for iMessage and for phone. I want Apple to make an API so that I can have VIP for Twitter or WhatsApp or Messenger. That would allow far more granular control over notifications, especially on Apple Watch. For everything else, I use Search. Now, Apple recently changed Search and it doesn't work as well for me. It surfaces what it thinks are the most important messages, but I already have the most important messages. With Search, I wanna find a specific message and it's probably buried somewhere and the linear search results made it much easier to do that. I also have the default calendar and clock and weather and reminders and home apps, but I almost never use those. An increasing amount of my interactions with my phone just go through Siri. I ask Siri to check my calendar, to add an appointment, to tell me what the weather is, to add a reminder, to control my accessories and it just happens and I don't have to waste time spelunking through the interface. I also use the default Photos app. I don't like the idea of trusting my photos to a giant search company or social network. I like that Apple keeps everything local and syncs it only between my devices and my iCloud account. I do wish they got better at search though. They have added all sorts of machine learning and categories, but there's still a wide range of things you can't search for. For example, I type in phone, and I don't get any iPhones. The best thing about photos though, is I can do all the edits I want, including third-party plugins. And when I do those edits, they're non-destructive. They get synced to every device that I have. And if I undo any of those edits on any of those devices, they get synced back to all of those devices again. And yes, it's not as powerful as Google Photos, but it's also nowhere nearly as creepy. I use the default camera app whenever I want to take photos quickly. The pocket to picture speed is ridiculous. And it gives you super fast access to portrait mode and to portrait lighting and to all the computational photography stuff that Apple's experimenting with. I use Apple Maps mostly through Siri and I use Google Maps mostly through web links. I find Apple Maps has a better interface and is better for lane guidance. Google Maps is better at getting you to the door, but both of them screw up so goddamn always that I still think we need much better mapping solutions from everybody. I do use the bedtime mode in clocks, but when I get up before my alarm goes off and I start using my phone, my alarm still goes off and that seems like the easiest problem in the world to fix. Apple News still isn't in Canada, which means I have to leave my phone set to another country like an animal, but it's one of the first things that I read in the morning and one of the things that I check most frequently throughout the day. I'm all in on Apple Wallet. In fact, it's gotten to the point where I can almost leave my physical wallet at home. Apple Pay is just ubiquitous here and the ability to scan passes for almost everything else is just terrific. Notes is basically my idea journal. I just throw everything into it, whether it's text or links or photos or anything, and it syncs flawlessly between my iPhone, my iPad, and my Mac. I can dictate into it too. I often do that for article ideas or video ideas, and then I get home and I clean them up. But it makes sure that I can record ideas as I have them, and I never have to worry about forgetting them later. My work folder is what I use to manage all the stuff that I do every day. I have the YouTube Studio app on here, which is increasingly interesting because it lets me see how a video is doing, but more importantly, it lets me see comments as they come in so I can respond to them as quickly as possible. I do wish Google would lose its infatuation with the hamburger button though. It just allows too much junk UI and doesn't let them be thoughtful enough about what should be where in an app. Because I work remotely, Slack is like my virtual office. We have channels for all the different sites and projects and because everybody I work with is there, we can just chat anytime. Trello is how we manage our production process. Everything from ideas for articles or videos or podcasts to them being drafted, to them being proofed, to them being published. It all goes in here. And because of the card interface, they're just super easy to drag around as they go through those various states. We also have the iMore apps, which I honestly don't use that often. I know some people love them, but I'm not the biggest fan of having websites as apps. I'd rather just use the website and make sure the website is as good as possible. Dropbox is what we use to manage all our files in the office. And yes, Pokemon Go is a work app for me because Pokemon is one of the most popular topics on iMore and I'm blessed and cursed to have to write about it. So whenever there is an event or whenever something is happening, I just have to go out and get screenshots and write articles and it makes it easier if it's right up front. And then I have social, which again, because I work remotely becomes my village. I don't use Snapchat very much anymore. I used to at the beginning, but now I'm all Kylie Jenner about it. I use Tweetbot for Twitter because I find the official Twitter client just has no idea what it's trying to do at any given moment. And I've been using Twitter for a long time and Tweetbot just fits my idea of how Twitter should work as a service. Instagram I'm using more and more, and I know they shamelessly copied a lot of Snapchat's features, but I find the community way less hostile than I do Twitter. I don't know if that's because of the focus on photography, the inability to really retweet or have discussion threads, or what it is, but it just, it seems much more civil. Facebook I only use so that my family and family friends know that I'm still alive and don't feel the urge to call me. 
LinkedIn is just sort of there because honestly, I don't even think you could kill it with fire. I'll get to the doc in a second, but I just want to go through the other pages really quickly. So on the minus one page, I've never really spent much time customizing the widgets. Again, I just leave them as default. On the plus one page, I have all the Apple Fallover app, just everything else made by Apple that's on the App Store. Twitter's there because Tweetbot just doesn't have accessibility or the ability to do descriptions and pictures, and I need those some of the time. And then I have what I call the replacement app. As much as Apple is known for Sherlocking or replacing the functionality of apps in the operating system, there are some apps that have just moriarty at Apple right back and made better versions of the apps than are on the OS. Fantastical, if I don't use Siri, is just the fastest way to get events into and out of a calendar. And since it shares the same database, everything I added through Siri is always there and always ready. Filmic Pro and Halide are like pro versions of Apple's camera app. Filmic Pro will do everything, including rack focus. And Halide will do things like letting me shoot in RAW or doing manual control of exposure or white balance or focus or letting me play around with the depth API. PCalc is just the godfather of calculator apps. Uh, and not only is it way too much calculator for me, but James Thompson, the developer, keeps adding new and amazing things to it, including, of course, an AR mode. I have carrot weather because for those times when I don't want to use Siri, I still want to enjoy sarcasm on my iPhone. And of course, it also has an AR mode, what your app doesn't. I use Authy for two-factor authentication, and I use one password just to make sure that I have long, strong, unique passwords for every website and service that I use. Literally, whenever I get a new device, I install Dropbox and then one password, which is linked to Dropbox, and thanks to iCloud and Google Sync, I'm good to go. Drafts is great. You can dictate into it straight from Apple Watch. For me, it's just time-shifted text. Anything that's pure text that I want to make sure I have and can use anywhere goes into drafts. Skype I use for podcasts on the Mac, and I keep it on my iOS devices in hopes that Apple will eventually add a way to make it easy to record podcasts on the iPhone and iPad as well. The Google folders, because my work insists on us all using Google accounts. Travel is what I use to get places and to get around when I'm at places. I have all the podcast apps. I use Apple Podcasts for Siri. I use Overcast for commutes. I use Pocket Cast for video podcasts. And then Home is sort of like the junk drawer for all the HomeKit apps. So lastly, the dock. iMessage is how I keep in touch with all my friends, all my family, and most of the people I work with. And though I don't think it would ever happen because it would be so expensive for Apple and there's no upside, I kind of do wish that Android friends could use it too. Apple Music is another app that I almost always use through Siri. I don't listen to a lot of music, but I love the idea to be able to ask for any song I want, any time I want, and then just have that song start playing. Phone is phone, but you know Steve Jobs totally buried the lead when he put Internet Communicator last in the iPhone introduction. And then there's Safari, which is still one of my most used apps. I mean, the web is a platform in its own right. And I use it for everything from reading information to doing work. I mean, Drupal, which is what we use for iMore, isn't the best on mobile, but still almost any article I can go in right on my phone. And if I have to, I can make corrections. I can change things. I can fix things. I can add things no matter where I am, no matter when it is. What I don't have on my phone are things like to-do apps. I like the idea of them, but they end up being like the gym memberships of the app store. But most of the time, I just think they add overhead and reminders, especially time and location reminders, are enough for me to get the really important things done. I also don't have any alternate keyboards installed except for Bitmoji, which is ridiculously fun. I just don't think Apple's implementation is that great. It's still non-obvious how to add them, how to enable them, how to give them access beyond the sandbox, and none of them really provide enough functionality beyond the quick type keyboard that I want to invest that much time or effort into them. But I'm not precious about it. If a better app comes along, I'll happily switch to it. And if you make a better app, maybe I'll switch to that too. And if you don't know how to make an app, but you always wanted to, you can take intro to mobile app design with Sketch 3 right now. It's available on Skillshare. There's over 6,000 students. And it covers topics like design a to-do list app. And it says it's great for anyone who's been wanting to try mobile app design but doesn't know where to start. And if that class isn't for you, there's 19,000 other classes. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this episode, the first 500 of you who sign up using the link I'm putting in the description below can get your first two months for just 99 cents. So that's what's on my iPhone right now. But I'm curious, what apps are on your iPhone? What are the five apps you use most? What are the five non-Apple apps that you use most? What are the five apps that you're still missing that just nobody does right for you yet? Let me know in the comments or at Renee Ritchie on Twitter. Meanwhile, if you like the video, hit the button, hit subscribe, tell your friends about Vector. Thank you so much for watching. This is an application we've written to deliver apps to the iPhone. And we're gonna put it on every single iPhone with the next release of the software.